Welcome to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to be covering the process of updating your Monoprice Maker Ultimate 2 3D printer to a more modern firmware. Um, if you watched my other review video of that printer, I stated I was going to be building custom firmware for it and I'm finally releasing it. And as you can see, I'm on my GitHub page. But we'll go over the basic process for getting the printer flashed and a couple of the things you need to do just to get the printer ready, you know, to actually print. Uh, and then I'll do a quick test print for you just to show you the, the quality that we get out of it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to need to do is actually get to the web page. The link is in the description. Next, once you're there, you're going to need to grab these three files ones I have highlighted. The top one, which is not necessary really, I mean it's starting in G-code for your slicer, you know, Cura, Prusa Slicer, Orca, whatever. If you already grabbed my other um, 228 version of the start in G-code, all you really need to do is just comment out the G29 in the start G-code itself. Um, that's the only difference between the two sets. Um, it isn't necessary in this new firmware. The second file that you need to grab is the hex file you see listed here. That's the actual firmware itself. That's the file you're going to be pushing to the printer. And then lastly, you need to grab this zip file, which actually comes from WeDo. Uh, it's the firmware pusher that they have. Unzip it and in there. There's an exe file you need to execute. And let's go ahead and uh, get that up and running and I'll show you all the settings for it and everything. Okay, so we're in the actual WeDo firmware updater. Now you should have your computer plugged into your printer at this point. If you don't, stop, plug your printer in um, using the USB cable that they gave you. This won't work without you doing that. Next, you're going to need to open the hex file that you downloaded from my GitHub. You can see it highlighted here. Now my locations might be different from your location. It probably will be, but you need to set it and open that file. Next, you need to make sure that you have the 62B highlighted for the type. Lastly, you need to set your COM port. If your COM port isn't listed, just hit the refresh. And then you should see one listed in there like you see mine's on COM6. Finally, you're going to hit the update. And this is going to actually push to your printer. This might take a little while for it to actually go through. And I'll show you... Um, what the actual printer would be doing at this point because the printer screen you know again the printer needs to be on for this to work the printer screen should go completely blue and then you're not going to see anything again until it's actually finished and then you'll see the marlin screen show up but we'll go ahead and we'll let this finish through just takes a couple of seconds and then once it finishes like i said i'll show you what you'll see on the actual screen of the printer so it's just doing a verification that everything pushed the way it was supposed to and that's that now your printer should be updated you should see a marlin screen on it at this point and it should be telling you initialization because uh, your eprom is corrupt okay so this is the view from your printer as you're getting ready to do your flash, you should see the screen go blue. It'll stay blue for a bit. And then you'll see the Marlin screen actually come up, the boot screen come up. So the first time you do this, you're going to get this screen here. If you flash it again, you might not see it, but the first time you will, you just want to say reset. That's going to set all of your EEPROM values to the defaults. So first thing we want to do is we want to go to motion and then we want to go to Z probe wizard and this will set our um, Z offset for our probe. And if you don't know, you know, the Z offset is the distance between when the probe triggers and where the actual nozzle itself is. And it's very important that we set this. Um, this firmware does things a little bit differently than the 228 does. So we're always going to use the probe as our end stop 
for our Z. So the you know Z and stuff that's at the bottom of the printer uh, that that won't be used anymore. I mean it, it's still used. It, it will stop it if it gets to it. But from now on, you know uh, that end stop is our Z Max. Our Z Min is going to go by the probe as it should have been. But anyway, come in here, you know, make your adjustments, um, check to make sure that you know your nozzle is at the proper height, um, and then save it and store it. And I will show you the printer view, you know, as I'm going through this and moving the um, nozzle down closer towards the bed. So this is the view from the printer as I was manipulating the screen over there. The homing system is a little different now um, in this firmware. It's going to home to the probe, you know, like, like any probe based system would normally do. Once we do that, then it'll move the nozzle to the middle. And then from here, we're going to adjust our um, offset. Now for me, I, I use a feeler gauge. I don't like using uh, paper because, you know, paper comes in various thicknesses. But you know, anyway, I use a feeler gauge. This one's a 0 0.1 millimeter feeler gauge. Um, and you want the nozzle to just barely touch it. You know, just the slightest drag that's on it. Um, I find that normally gets me exactly where I need to be. Now, keep in mind that, you know, this is really a starting point for setting your Z offset. Um, you're going to need to do some fine adjustments afterwards, you know, and you can really only do that by doing a test print. You know, whatever your uh, thickness is, your line height is set to, um, like I use 0.28. Uh, you need to print a single layer that, that is that height and then look at it and gauge, you know, whether or not it has the right amount of squish or not. Um, I'm really not going to go into setting your first layer in this one. Um, that can be, you know, kind of a lengthy process. Maybe I'll do a video later. But anyway, just this will get you close. Okay, so now that our offset is taken care of, we want to go back to motion. Then we want to go to bed leveling. And then we want to go to level bed. And this will kick off the probing process to build our mesh. Now, um, the Monoprice firmware 228 was using bilinear um, bed leveling. I'm also using bilinear bed leveling in this version. The only real difference is that they were doing a three point bed mesh, whereas I'm doing a nine point bed mesh. So the mesh should be bigger and it should be more accurate. Um, now I do have um, auto leveling turned on always. So, you know, it doesn't matter you do a G28 or not, it's going to re-enable bed leveling after it homes. This is why you no longer need that G29 um, in the start G code. So there's no point to probing this bed every time you print. Anyway, as you can see on the screen, we're going through, it'll show you, you know, this is how many points we've done, so forth and so on. Now I've sped this up, yours is not gonna show, you know, the changes this fast because it, it's kind of slow as it goes through each probe. Um, but I just wanted to show you what the screen was going to have on it. So this is what you should be seeing. And now it's finished. So we want to go to um, configuration now. And then we're going to go down to store settings so that we know that our mesh was saved. So this is the actual view from the printer. Uh, as it's going through its mesh building cycle. Again, I've sped this up, so you know it, it's gonna be uh, not this fast on yours, but I just wanted to show you what it should look like. You know, we'll do a, a row of three, back up a little bit, do another row of three, back up a little bit, do another row of three. Pretty standard stuff. Now that it's finished, we'll go ahead and move on to our next two items. All right, so now we've got 
two more things to do, then we can print some stuff. So let's go to configuration, then advanced settings. Then we're going to go down to temperature. And we're going to PID tune E1. There we go. And set this to whatever temperature you normally print at. I'm going to use 200 here. So that's what I use for PLA. And then press in the dial. And then it'll start heating up. And you know, I've, I've sped this up for you because it's going to take a little bit for this to happen. And you'll see all kinds of you know, ups and downs on the temperature for the nozzle. But it's really important to do this. And the most important reason for it is that you will speed up how quickly um, your nozzle gets to temperature and how easily it can stay at that temperature. So it's really important to do this PID tune. Now, again, anytime you make changes to the printer, or if you're going to start using a different media, like say you wanted to do ABS, you're going to come back here and do this PID tune again. Because, you know, it's only good for a specific temperature. And again, like I said, I, I did 200. But once that's done, then we're going to move on to the next one, which would be our bed. Okay, so our last bit we need to do here, let's go back to configuration, then advanced settings, and then down to temperature. And then we are going to PID auto tune bed. I'm just going to use 50 here because that's what I normally do PLA at. And, you know, again, I've sped this up. Yours won't be going this fast. But uh, like I said before, it's important to do this because it helps you reach temperature faster but it also helps the system maintain that temperature. And also, like I said, for the hot end, anytime you make any type of changes uh, you know, to the bed, you know, say you put a different surface on there or, or anything like that, any type of change, then you need to come in here and run this PID tune again. Um, you know, if you go to ABS, I'm gonna be printing a lot of ABS with this printer. Uh, that's why I bought it. Um, you know, I'll be printing at 100 degrees versus 50 degrees. So I'll come back in here and I'll PID tune for that 100 degrees. But, you know, again, just keep that in mind. Anytime you make changes or your new default, your new standard, you know, what you're going to be printing the most at is what you want to PID tune for. Now, if as long as you're using 50 degrees or you're using 100 degrees, whatever you PID tune for, you don't need to run it again. But we'll go ahead and let this finish up. Once this finishes, then we will go ahead and do a test print uh, and see you know, what kind of results we can expect to see out of this printer on this new firmware. So I just wanted to take a minute you know, here at the end to do a little test print to show you how things are working on this um, new firmware and you know while i'm at it let me just go ahead and say if if you like this content um, go ahead and like and subscribe uh, hit that little bell button and you know we'll i'll continue to produce things like this but let's go ahead and let this print and then we'll see the results Okay, so let's see what we got here. And like always, we are just super glued to this bed. My adhesion is just fantastic on this printer. It's a little too fantastic, to be honest. Um, if any of you have found a better solution, um, aside just using glue and the glass, uh, please let me know. Leave a comment. Let me know what you're doing. Um, I mean, the tape works. The tape works great. It just works a little too well, to be honest. But if I get it under there, then I can kind of pry it up a bit. And I mean, the masking tape isn't difficult to replace. You know, it, they give you a roll in the box. We might get lucky getting this one off. Got it ripping. We'll see. And nope, there it ripped. That's okay. Like I said, it's easy to fix it. Just replace that bit of tape. 
anyway so this is a nice little print it's a mini printer test off of printables i think the guy won an award for it it's fantastic little print it shows you all the stuff that your printer can do and as you can see it's it's perfect i mean there's absolutely nothing wrong here um, you can see all of the fine details there's zero stringing your bridges are the way they're supposed to be uh, everything you know everything looks just exactly as it's supposed to it's fantastic you can see even a little hole there but i hope you enjoyed this um, let me know in the comments how you make out.